Okay, here I wanted to do a little thing on uh, line sizing for refrigeration. Now, in the field, you're really not going to line size generally. The manufacturer is going to line size for you. What I'm trying to tell you on this one is why you're sizing the lines. Okay. I've got a picture of a line here. This is a suction line. The suction line is the one we're most worried about. The liquid line, whereas it does need to be sized, it's all liquid and the liquid contains the oil that lubricates the compressor. So when it's liquid, it's mixed and there's not a problem. Where we do get into a problem is in the suction line. Now, suction line is, of course, larger than the liquid line simply because it's a gas instead of a liquid. You can move a lot more liquid in a small line than you can gas in a small line. So you'll increase the size of it. Now, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to decide what size it should be. Now, I'm not really sizing this. I'm telling you what they use to determine size. Okay, we've got a suction line right here. Okay, gas is moving through this suction line. What happened to the oil that was in the liquid? Well, when you evaporate the liquid into a gas, the oil does not participate. Obviously, the oil is just part of the, you know, it, it lays on the bottom of the line. So it's going to be down here somewhere. Now, if I have gas moving through this line, it's going to draw the oil with it. So the very bottom here, we would have a layer of oil. So if I use a very large line, like I've got a really large line here, that's going to slow down the feet per minute of the gas. Now, if that's understandable to you, because the larger line is going to allow more gas to go through at a slower speed. Now, that sounds great because that would reduce any interaction with the sides of the tubing here, which would, you know, create friction. However, if it's too large, then the oil that's laying in the bottom here doesn't move with it. So in the suction line, we have to balance between the velocity of the gas and friction. So we create a suction line that's large enough to uh, allow a small amount of friction with the line, which will increase efficiency but we'll also have enough velocity to draw this oil with it. Now remember, this line, I'm showing you a straight line here. This line could be curved, it could be going up, it does all sorts of different things. So, uh, let's reduce the size of this line and we'll see what happens. Okay, here you can see I've actually removed this line. I've still got the three lines in there, so I'm trying to move the same amount of gaseous refrigerant through here. But it's going to go much faster. The velocity is going to be higher. So it's going to drag this oil that's laying along the bottom with it. And that's the idea behind these things. You have to balance this thing between pressure drop because of friction with the... Uh, uh, lines and too slow of a velocity which will not drag the oil with it. So this is pretty much what we end up doing is the manufacturer decides what they're going to do for the line size depending on what type of refrigerant it is, what pressures it is, and so on, because those things all give them clues as to what, uh, what size line to use. So, if you have 
a line that is small enough to drag the oil with it and yet large enough to have a small pressure drop, then you're fine. This is going to work. But let's say I use too large a line. Then the, the refrigerant is going to move too slowly. The oil is going to stay in the line. It's going to be staying in the bottom of this line instead of moving through it. And so you could get to a point where the compressor has pumped oil out and it doesn't come back. Remember, all compressors pump oil. It's part of what they do. And these uh, scroll compressors really move a lot of oil through. They really pump a lot of oil. So it's very important that this oil be returned to the compressor. So when we're sizing these lines, we have to get the right size lines. Uh, let's say the line is going vertical. If it's going vertical, then it's even a little more critical. You do need enough velocity to get it to move up. And in fact, we sometimes will put P-traps in these lines. If they're vertical, we'll put a P-trap in them so that the gaseous refrigerant has to actually blow through liquid oil to kind of uh, move that oil up. So there's all sorts of things that we have to deal with here. And velocity is by far the most uh, important part of this. So don't get into the idea that, well, I'll put bigger lines in, that'll give me less friction and more efficiency. It may not work. Follow what the manufacturer says. In refrigeration systems, not air conditioning, but uh, built up refrigeration systems, there will be charts with them and giving uh, distance and line size and uh, how, uh, how much vertical line you can go before you have to put P-traps and so on like that. And so I hope this helps in understanding the refrigerant line sizing, especially for suction lines.